You know, it all started with a question. I wanted to know, what does studio process assessment reveal about sixth grade students' artistic thinking? I mean, could art students actually become aware of and document their own artistic thinking? I determined the best way to find out was to have students document their thinking while they were making art. I planned two multi-week art projects. The first was a theme-based clay project. The second was an autobiographical painting project. The clay project served as a pilot phase of the study, which was great. This allowed me and my students to test and revise the procedures we would use in the second half of the study. In the second projects, the students each used gouache, a type of opaque watercolor, to create a painting that told the story of their lives. The study relied on three aspects of research, research in the studio habits of mind, self-regulated learning, and multimodal literacy. The eight studio habits of mind were used so students would know the types of studio thinking they might identify while they were making art. Students suggested that icons representing the studio habits displayed around the classroom would help to prompt their thinking, and a checklist of observable skills associated with each studio habit was given to each student to accompany the icons. Since it would be impossible to teach all day and to keep track of what my students were thinking, students were prompted to track their own thinking. Using this self-regulated approach freed me to answer questions and assist those who most needed my help. Using a reflective journal along with the checklist, students documented moments when they caught themselves or others thinking like an artist. When the autobiographical paintings were finished, students used computer software to make a multimodal digital journal. This strategy became a practical application of theory and multimodal literacy. The use of digital media allowed students to combine photographs, text, narration, and sound into a summative movie, which enabled them to describe their own artistic process. By combining multiple modes of thinking, students were able to have a voice in how others viewed the art they made. Students appreciated being able to explain reasons for their art making, you know, that may not have been obvious in the final painting. The study concluded with an exhibition at the local art museum. This was fantastic. Having the artwork on display in such a significant location really made an impression on students as they saw their artwork hanging in the same space as famous artists they'd studied in school. 43 digital journals were each transcribed frame by frame and analyzed to determine whether or not evidence was included to support use of a particular studio habit. In conducting this study with pre-adolescents, three conclusions were made. One, the studio habits of mind facilitate artistic discussion. Two, students value different aspects of the studio process. And three, students can identify and express their artistic needs. For conclusion one, I found that artistic discussions occurred with students as well as when talking with my colleagues. Using common language associated with the art making process allowed us to move beyond the elements of design and into meaningful conversations about artistic envisioning, expression, exploration, perseverance, and reflection. This is important because if I only assess artwork based on skill and technique, then I may be missing the artistic practice that was most meaningful to the student. Which led me to conclusion number two, that students value different aspects of the studio process. I remember one student in particular who was most proud of the painting at an earlier stage of the process. He took a risk, yet didn't like the end result, and was able to successfully articulate his feelings about it, explaining that he liked the painting best at an earlier stage. If we want students to become risk takers, then they need to know that they can be collaborators in determining their own artistic growth and success. They need to help us evaluate the entire process and decide which phase of the work represents their best thinking. This is especially important when students are learning new skills. Finally, the study helped me to realize that students can identify and express their artistic needs. Treating students like artists, like peers, caused me to become more generous with time and materials. Students wanted the opportunity to restart a project if a better idea came along. So I started making art to go kits for students who needed extra time to work at home. We made fewer artworks in class, but started experimenting more using better art supplies. Because we focused on more than skill, students with varying abilities were able to find success as they excelled in different aspects of artistic production. 
To better understand the collected data, I stitched and painted my findings into two quilts, which allowed me to see and experience the data in an artistic way. Now I'm working to help teacher candidates better understand the value in promoting artistic thinking. This journey changed my life as an educator. I encourage those who include art making as part of their educational practice to rely on artistic thinking dispositions, teach students to document their own thinking, and to broaden assessment practices to include more than the final product. As educators, we can bring this expansive understanding of artistic thinking to our students. If pre-adolescents can come to understand what it means to think like an artist, then maybe just maybe the artistic impulse will stay with them into adulthood.